Just fired, lost your job, laid off, what now? Getting fired from your job is rarely, if ever, a pleasant experience. And unlike your boss, who has been planning your termination and consulting with its legal counsel, your firing is done without advance notice. Now you are out of work, without any certainty as to how you are going to meet your financial requirements, and need to focus upon your immediate future. Your former boss, meanwhile, has been looking to limit your payout, hoping that you will quickly accept their termination package because of the financial predicament that they place you in. So what should you be looking at doing? First and foremost, contact an employment lawyer that can immediately advise you as to next steps. Acting quickly is important when it comes to certain preliminary steps related to one's firing, such that you want to get this practical guidance to strengthen your position and improve the lawyer's negotiating position. If you are being asked to wait any significant length of time before speaking to a lawyer, your window to take certain actions that would benefit your position might disappear. You'll want to understand your position in relation to the termination package that is being offered, as there are sometimes more than a take-it-or-leave-it dynamic. You simply need to understand what those options are. The common perception is that you must either 1. Take what your former employer is offering, or 2. Refuse it and hope to receive something better through negotiations and or court litigation. These might well be the only two options if you are employed in the United States or wish to base your life on Hollywood movies. However, that is not necessarily the case in Canadian employment situations. And for that very reason, you want to be speaking with a knowledgeable employment lawyer because where the particular facts align, those lawyers like to work those situations and truly mess with the employer's plans. So what are these other options that fire Canadian employees might have at their disposal? A. Getting paid their termination pay while refusing to sign any paperwork sought by their former employer where the amount of additional common law severance pay is insignificant. B. Accepting the termination package of statutory termination pay and common law severance pay while signing off on the former employer's desired paperwork because other aspects that the lawyer seeks to pursue is not covered by their paperwork. C. Accepting the termination package of statutory termination pay and common law severance pay while signing off on the former employer's desired paperwork because the lawyer believes their paperwork can be defeated in a court of law. With each approach, the fired employee is capable of receiving the bulk of what their former employer is offering while preserving the right for their lawyer to pursue their greater legal entitlement, which they are legally due. However, the availability of these preferable options or other strategies that you might consider after being fired will not be known to yourself unless you consult with a knowledgeable lawyer in advance of taking your next steps. Having increased confidence in how you respond to your former employer is going to have a positive ripple effect on your other post-employment actions, from looking for your next job to dealing with the emotional stress of having your life upended. As such, dealing with the legal component of your firing or layoff and having a proper understanding of your options and the course of action that you do take is going to have a significant impact on all other post-employment aspects, such that it makes sense to look into your legal situation with a lawyer willing to provide the legal insight, irrespective of how hard it might be. So what are the other actions that you should be looking to do when you have been fired from your job? Collect and organize all employment-related materials, including employment contracts, bonus awards, promotions, pay adjustments, commendations, progress reports and evaluations, disciplinary actions, employee contributions, and pay statements. If pay statements were not emailed to a personal email, but sent to your company email or maintained on a third-party system, download them or have them forwarded. Request the immediate return of all personal items, as well as copies of all emails that were sent by your employer to your corporate email pertaining to your employment. 
Review your insurance situation, especially health-related insurance, including its transference and continuance so as to maintain coverage. Review the transference of any investment that are held with your former employer and how they should be appropriately transferred out. Review pension arrangements that are maintained with the employer and how you might continue to monitor payouts. Collect personal contact information from co-workers that you wish to remain in contact with or might look to call upon in the future. If possible, obtain reference letters from immediate supervisors with whom you had a good relationship, together with having their direct personal contact information. Also, look to supervisors who are no longer with the employer, whose viewpoint is far more impartial. Take advantage of any post-employment career services that might be offered by your former employer. Update your resume. Solicit the assistance of others, including numerous free services that are available. Do interview preparation. Be prepared to answer the tough questions associated with your prior job. Seek out new employment if it is your intention to return to the workforce. Hopefully, you can focus on looking for the right job and not simply the first available job. If seeking employment insurance regular benefits, prepare necessary filings, collect required materials, and establish a schedule to comply with government requirements. If undertaking retraining, look to requirements for EI regular benefits as well as other financial assistance programs. Make appropriate modifications to your household budget to reflect the reduction in your personal income. These are but some of the practical steps that you might look to undertake, which should be appropriately modified to meet your personal circumstances. Further ideas might well be available to yourself, such that you should not hesitate in asking for help and suggestions from others, as they tend to be an excellent resource for dealing with your current job loss. When you've been fired, laid off, or otherwise lost your job, you need to take decisive action that is focused on moving yourself forward. For knowledgeable legal counsel, contact our law firm for a free initial consultation. Thank you.